Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld uh, with an extension to our Kubernetes uh, demo. Uh, please go watch the crib demo that I already did um, where I built uh, the cluster with video one, two, three, four, and five. Um, in the, the previous video, I just finished rebooting uh, this, this other, the second, this first cluster. Um, and you can see they're back in the wait state. And so I could uh, ch come in and start a new uh, live cluster deployment. It's very exciting. And so I'm going to go through and let, let this run in the background while we talk. The purpose of this, this video is very specific. I want to show you the process that we use to edit uh, the, the profiles. So the idea here is that, I, that you have gone in and pulled out the Git repo. So let me show you what that looks like over here. So in this case, I have um, my git, of our, I've checked out um, the, the, that repo, right? And there's a whole bunch of content in this, not just crib. Uh, in this case, we're going to be very focused on crib. Uh, and so from that perspective, if I want to then make an addition, an edit to crib, uh, let's see, which I could do, uh, let me bring up one of my edit windows over here. So this is uh, Sublime Text, and I have uh, my crib directory checked out with all the bits and pieces in it. And so if, as an example, what I wanted to do is come in and change, you could say, you know what, Rob, I, I really disagree that the reset icon should be red um, for the stage. So over here, I'm going to go in the stages, and I'm going to find my crib reset over here. dev reset and you can say you know what it shouldn't be red uh, it should be purple and you know what it should actually be a spy instead of, of that um, and so and then lobby Shane to get a plus one on this pull request uh, it makes perfect sense but this is this is basically a, a very small tweak I just want to show you what it, what what this dev process looks like and our experience with this dev process is um, it is so easy to follow this pattern that we do not um, do any UX for development. We actually work here and then over, over in the system, right? So I can say git diff. I can see the change I just made. Excellent. I'm actually using uh, proper infrastructure's code patterns. And then to make it up into the system, I've already set my endpoint, so I'm a remote endpoint. So I've, I've set my, um, let's see, I'll show it to you this way, cat uh, rs endpoint. So I've set my rs endpoint. Um, yeah. And uh, good, I said it correctly. Um, and uh, it's going to talk to the remote system instead of my local system. By default, it's going to talk to your local uh, system unless you override. So now I can say, let me clear this. I'm all set. I want to push this update into the new system. So I can say DRP CLI contents, because we're messing with contents, contents bundle. So we're taking all that code that I have from this root directory upward. Uh, and you can look at the, I'm not going to take you through everything that's in there. We have three other videos that show you this process also. Uh, and I'm going to call it crib. If I want to have multiples, I could name them other things, but I'm not going to be very creative. So I'm going to call it crib.yaml. So it's going to take all of that, those files. Uh, they're edited in YAML, but they're stored in JSON because uh, it's Go and it's API driven stuff. Um, and if I wanted to look at that, I could look at crib.yaml. Here's all that, all those files in a handy YAML format. And then uh, I want to push that into the system. So DRP CLI. Now I'm, and you'll notice I'm cheating because I'm just going to do them in sequence. So I'm going to contents bundle upload crib.yaml. And when I do this, sorry, not that, crib upload. And literally it's going to take, it's going to bundle the files and it's going to upload them. Uh, and then it'll show me the contents update. So that is uh, my output from that contents. Excellent. And with that change, I, I don't even need to make any additional adjustments. If I go into stages list, 
here is my purple spy already set. So code changes don't require refreshes, they are applied instantly, and they're maintained as read-only. So in this case, this stage, um, I, I'm not changing it here. I, you know, I can't edit it in the UX, I can only edit it through this process. Um, but it's so easy to, to run that cycle that um, it's, it's very, very simple. So if I had gone in, and I'll show you, I'll do another tweak that makes this interesting. Um, let's go in and make a little bit deeper tweak uh, because I'm, I'm troubleshooting uh, that reset code. So I come into tasks, dev reset, and in this case I've put some of the code in the task and some of the code is actually in a, temp in a template. But what I really want to do is we're just going to go in and uh, we're going to go and before I get anywhere I'm going to say, you know what, I, I really want to stop. I'm going to exit, exit one, this script. Once again I come back, I have to upload it again because I just made the change. Now you could easily monitor this directory and automatically every time you save do that push. I come back into bulk actions and now I want to say, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of this, it's not going to do the thing I need. What I want to do is go back into uh, cluster reset. I'm applying that stage. It's not going to pick it up because it's they're paused, so I have to make them runnable. And so the machines are now in, in, in crib reset. You can see our purple icon. And what, what happens is here, because I put an exit one, <laughs> there's another bug. Um, there's a, a race condition when you run this reset on all the machines. You don't have to, you just need it on one of the machines. Um, and so it's it's coming up with a race condition. Uh, here's all the jobs that we have. Let's go back to bulk actions. Let me just run this again. And so now I'm just in a loop where I'm, I'm running it. It's going to try and run it and then, and then it's going to fail. So in that sleep mode. And then once it fails, I can now go back in. I actually put exit ones in my scripts while I'm building them so that I can just go back and in the bulk actions I can literally come back and just hit runnable, test it, runnable, test it. And so my, my dev pattern is super simple from that perspective. I can just go through the process over and over again um, until it gets fixed. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is if you make a Golang template error which happens, um, the system won't even render the template, but you can just fix it. So if you fix the template, it's going to keep trying to render that template, and you can just fix the template and upload it. You don't have to reset. Uh, if you get really wedged, uh, sometimes to get the system unstuck, you have to um, reboot the machine to reset the runner, because the runner's not going to pick up new tasks until it finishes. Um, and it's, this is literally going through and, and trying to make all those uh, processes happen to reset the uh, profile. And that's the basic dev pattern. It's uh, really not that complex. Obviously something's still not quite right in that. And so I would keep going through this process to troubleshoot. Um, but that's it. You should be able with that knowledge to come in, uh, look at the code to figure out where it's working in the Kubernetes process, get your logs. Uh, this is the dash X, SETI dash X. And, um, that's going to give you this extra output. Uh, and then you can troubleshoot things, add some echoes in, um, figure out what, where things are going. Uh, it's, it ends up being pretty straightforward uh, it, when you realize, right, params, the data is coming from a parameter, is being rendered uh, through stages, tasks, and templates. Uh, so this is a great place to learn digital rebar. The code is not, not really that crazy complex, and you can walk, walk it through the system um, and learn how, how the system operates. Once again, uh, if you need help, we have a lot of documentation about this. Um, the documentation links, uh, provision, read the docs, and that'll take you into, we have a lot of API docs and Golang template information and things like that. There's a wealth of, of material in the, in the documentation that we build, and uh, I already showed you how you can contribute to making it even better um, and extending it. I hope this was helpful. Um, we'd love to see you all on our Slack channels uh, talking about this, trying to get this to work. Um, we think it's a really simple, fast, direct way to install Kubernetes um, that really just means you need digital rebar and Kubernetes, and that's it.